Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. What is the real secret message that George Lucas is trying to convey through his Star Wars films? He has gone on record claiming the originals were a veiled commentary on Vietnam, President Nixon, and Western imperialism, but I think that's all just a cover for the much more enlightening message he has hidden within his story. Star Wars is really just sex wars. Let's take a closer look. There are two sides to the Force, but what does the Force actually represent? I believe it represents human sexuality. Male sex organs are outside the body, in the light. A woman's are internal, in the dark. The Force functions within the Star Wars universe the same way that human sexuality functions in real life. It is the true source of motivation behind all human conflict and is therefore inadvertently responsible for all of humanity's philosophical and technological progress. I believe that the Sith are meant to represent female sexuality and the gynocentrism that dominates today's world. Regardless of the fact that they are depicted as male characters, they do indeed represent vital aspects of female nature. Think about it. Who has benefited the most from the use of their sexuality force throughout history? Women have. In the Star Wars universe, it is the Sith. Just like the Sith, a woman's entire motivation in life is to nest and to hoard, to network, to weave a web, and to build an empire. The more dark side of the Force a Sith employs, or the more sex a woman participates in, the more power she can potentially wield. The more children a woman produces with her Force magic, the more potential she has to benefit either directly or indirectly. However, just like the Sith, the more of her dark magic that she utilizes, the more she will dilapidate and wither away. That being said, the Jedi are clearly meant to represent male sexuality. They are the embodiment of loyalty, prudence, and introspection. While a lower level Jedi Knight uses a blue saber, the Jedi Master uses a green one. As we know, green represents fertility, and so a green lightsaber represents a Jedi who has mastered his application of the Force. And don't forget that the supreme master of the light side of the force is the horny little green toad, Yoda. Men have a seemingly insatiable drive for sex and for female validation. We will typically trade almost all of our time, energy, and resources to gain access to these things. The Jedi study for years trying to learn everything they can about the force. Their use of the force enables them to resurrect airships and move mountains. They insist on serving the Force and striving to master it, while the Sith use the Force exclusively to serve their own ends. Just like the Sith Emperor, a woman benefits the most by the use of deception and manipulation. Unfortunately, this seems to imply that female sexuality itself is an inherently evil thing. But whether we like it or not, it is a woman's biological imperative to be self-serving and materialistic. It is in her best interest to perpetuate perceivable reality by spawning new life into this material realm, just as it is in the best interest of the Sith to perpetuate the existence of the Galactic Empire. And thus, the Empire symbolizes the tangible, palpable reality of which females are the gatekeepers. That is why the evil Galactic Emperor is named Palpatine, a play on the word palpable. He wants complete control of everything, as any materialistic matriarch would. And just as a woman puts on a mask of makeup to manipulate those around her, Emperor Palpatine uses the dark side of the Force to generate his own deceptive mask of health and youth. Furthermore, it should be noted that the male role of the Emperor was actually played by a female in the original films. Here are some more clues that lead me to believe the Sith represent female sexuality and female nature. It is said that the dark side of the Force is much easier to access and to use. It's the choice of the selfish Force user. The dark side is driven by one's feelsies, and the more chaotic and irrational those feelsies may be, the more force power one can exploit. Along with the dark side comes an insatiable narcissistic thirst for control, which explains why Palpatine was a master politician. The Emperor uses passive-aggressive tactics, even creating a false flag hoax war to cement his complete takeover of the galaxy. The Emperor commands an army of disposable egg clones, which he has no problem sacrificing to further his dark side agendas. The users of the dark side employ red lightsabers representing menstruation. All lightsabers are powered by crystals, and the Sith literally make these crystals bleed in order to turn their sabers red. Their most powerful weapon is a moon. And what else supposedly has more to do with female fertility than the moon? At one point in the story, Order 66 is passed, 
This was a call to eliminate all of the Jedi, essentially aborting their seed from the galaxy. Is it just a coincidence that in 1966, abortion was legalized for the first time in one of the United States? The Sith followed the rule of two, no more, no less. This is done in order to ensure a Dark Master's stealth as he operates from the shadows. For a Sith Lord to realize their ultimate potential, they must have an apprentice to abuse and exploit. However, it is expected that this apprentice will eventually realize their own full potential and take the matriarchal throne for themselves. This apprentice can take the form of a daughter, a younger sister, or even a best frenemy. A very wise man once said, Don't try to understand women. Women understand women, and they hate each other. And this is why the Sith only train their apprentices in the ways of the dark side once they've reached maturity. A Sith master inherently despises their apprentice because of this cycle. They are jealous of their apprentice's youth and potential. This is why they always abuse their underling in some way and never teach them everything that they know. Darth Sidious, also known as Emperor Palpatine, is truly the most powerful Sith that has ever existed. He had even secretly studied the light side of the Force in his efforts to gain immortality. Technically, this is not a violation of Sith practices, as the end goal of all Sith is absolute power. However, tradition still dictates that a Sith Master is required to seek out their own replacement. Over time, Palpatine ends up going through three apprentices, each of which are fully exploited to further the agendas of the dark side. I believe that these three apprentices represent the three most powerful and effective tools used by the hidden gynocracy to maintain its preeminence throughout the years. The first was Darth Maul. He represents feminist sexual liberation. He was extremely aggressive and played a huge role in helping the gynocracy rise to power. Of course, he was oh so symbolically split in two right up the middle by a Jedi sword, but will go down in history as a useful hero to the gynocracy. Then there was Count Dooku. He was only a temporary pawn for Palpatine and was originally a Jedi, a user of the light side. Most interestingly, Dooku was actually turned and chose to join the dark side. And if we're being honest, what does Dooku sound like? Yeah, that's what leads me to believe that Dooku represents homosexuality, which, for the hidden gynocracy, has been an extremely powerful tool in the emasculation of society. And finally, there was Anakin. Like Count Dudu, Anakin had been born a Jedi. Anakin was prophesied to be the chosen one who would bring balance to the Force. After years of deceptive courtship, Anakin aligned himself with Palpatine and began to follow the dark side. Anakin ends up killing Dooku off for the Emperor, but is defeated by his previous Jedi Master, Obi-Wan, who cuts off several of his limbs. In doing so, Obi-Wan symbolically rejects him for being a turncoat against the light side. As Anakin lay dying, a Jedi castrated of his extremities, Palpatine saves him. The Dark Lord is predictably disappointed, but also relieved. Then, in true best friend mom fashion, Palpatine torturously transhumanizes Anakin, symbolically killing him off while simultaneously giving birth to Darth Vader. In these ways, Darth Vader is meant to represent transgenderism. In fact, episodes 1 through 3 are all about his transition to the dark side. And this is why Anakin was symbolically used to kill off Count Dudu. Because transgenderism has replaced homosexuality in the gynocracy's agenda of social emasculation. With this new apprentice, Palpatine believed he could become the greatest Sith Lord of all time. Remember, the Sith's primary goal is absolute power, but he was trying to break the master-apprentice cycle so he could rule forever. Darth Vader would be used to bring balance to both sides of the Force, or rather, he would be the embodiment of both halves of the Force. By neutering Anakin's light side and making him dependent on the dark side for survival, little Anakin Vader would never reach his full potential in either direction and could therefore never be a threat to the matriarchal throne of the hidden gynocracy. This would bring order out of the chaos that inherently burdens the dark side of the Force. But this of course brings up an important question. Why would the Sith ever want to employ the light side of the Force at all? Well, because the Sith know they would need the stability that the light side provides if any of their wild, irrational ambitions were ever going to be realized. Quite ironically, it is Vader's own Jedi son Luke, or Lucius, the light bearer, who reminds him of his true identity and brings his reign of terror to an end. The transgendered practitioner of the dark side is defeated by the very offspring he had fathered while still a user of the light side. And on a side note, what can be said of Han Solo? It's pretty clear that he symbolizes masturbation. Hand Solo? Come on. He's always there when you need him, right? 
and on many occasions, he saves the day and helps the light side defeat the dark side, doesn't he? He captains the Millennium Falcon, and the Falcon represents victory. Was George Lucas secretly suggesting that going solo with your hand is what will bring victory to the light side in the new millennium? The story arc of Han Solo is indeed quite an interesting one, if you think about it. Early on, Han is the embodiment of freedom and ambition. He could never be tied down. But once he lays with Princess Leia, he becomes trapped, frozen still. The two of them even end up having a child together who, most ironically, joins the dark side and kills Han. In the end, I believe Star Wars is a warning to young men about the misery and chaos the dark side can bring into one's life. It does unfortunately suggest the inevitability of duality, but in its defense, I think the whole thing might just be a cleverly disguised argument for hard patriarchy. The story is all about how both sides of the force are needed to perpetuate human existence, even though women are inherently villainous creatures. Hard patriarchy is simply being presented as the best solution to this problem that the light side has to offer. As always, much respect and thanks for watching.